Ok. <coughs> so, we can resume. Ok, we were at the point in which uh, we basically developed uh, all the APIs. Right, so the APIs were more or less developed. Ok, of course we need to still code them. But uh, we expect them to work. Ok. So let's do, let's do a further step that is uh, uh, deciding how to memorize things uh, in the server. OK, so decide the format of the database. OK. So of course, I mean, in most of the applications, I would say in all the applications you will find that the exam probably there will be users. OK, so I mean, the table about users is, you know, it's more or less a copy and paste. Maybe we need to add something more, like uh, your colleague was saying. Maybe we can put additional thing like uh, the, the full-time, part-time flag, or we can uh, uh, have additional information, but the basic information is there, okay? So in the table uh, about users, by the way, your colleague has called that uh, students. And we don't really care about the name, OK? Uh, let's say we have a name, uh, email. I mean, not really required, but I mean, um, you, you can at, at least a username. If you're using an email as a username, you need to have an email, OK? And then you have uh, the... Um, um, the hash of the password, the, the salt, okay? And then, and then we need to decide, okay? We need to decide, do we need to keep the full-time, part-time here? I think it's a good uh, place, okay? Because the study plan, well, uh, let's think about the study plan before, okay? So what, what's a study plan? Study plan. Right. Yeah, study plan. So the study plan is the study plan is a table that is basically a list of courses, right? Associated with a certain user. So there will be a course ID. Okay? That's because I assume there's a table. That is uh, courses, okay? The test, the course uh, ID, the name, and the information about uh, the courses. Uh, actually, it's in, in the text, uh, the number of credits, uh, the maximum number of students. Uh, uh, here, you need to decide uh, a format like uh, there's no maximum maybe you you write zero or minus one or whatever or null whatever you want the important thing is that you have uh, a way to identify this situation uh, if the course is mandatory or not and uh, that's all there would be the the incompatibilities but uh, i mean it's not needed for the study plan at the moment so in the study plan we have the course id so that's a foreign key, right, on courses. And that's the user ID, OK? User ID. So indeed, actually, we would need an ID, OK? Either it's the email or an ID. I suggest not to use emails in databases, foreign keys, OK? Nor usernames. Use an ID, an internal value, OK? Because usernames uh, and uh, uh, emails and stuff can change. Okay, if the user changes the email, you need to change a lot of things around in your database, which is always uh, difficult. Okay, while the user will never has to change the ID because it's an internal value of your application of your database. Okay, so please try to use an ID for for the users to identify users because it's easier in in the long term. Um, course ID, user ID, and uh, 
probably nothing else, right? That's all. Because the study plan is uh, a list of courses for a certain user. We don't need to add anything else, okay? We don't need to add uh, when the course was added and stuff like that, okay? Was not required, so that's fine. Um, we still need to, f to put the information about the type of the study plan. Where do we put the information? Actually, the study plan table is not the right place, right? Because you have uh, many entries for the same user. Actually, that's, since you have only one study plan for user, probably you can add the information to the user table, right? I mean, that's a natural place where to put it. Full time flag. Let's say flag. Or well, I don't like flag because it can also be not set yet. Okay? If you don't have a study plan, you don't have an option, full or part time. Okay? So basically, there can be three values nothing, can be null, or can be a value that you decide. And the two values that correspond to full, full uh, time and part time. Okay? Just don't, don't forget about the third value. Okay? And then, well, actually, we still need to model one thing that was uh, a course can have, uh, can be incompatible with one or more courses. Okay? So when I mean, if you forget about this at a certain point when implementing things on the server, when you need to check for incompatibilities, we, you will realize that you missed uh, some information. Okay, so you add the, the table, uh, like uh, table incompatibilities, uh, incompatibilities, uh, incompat, compat. It's okay to abbreviate a little bit, try not to be too cryptic, okay? A, B, C, D, okay, it doesn't mean that much. Uh, basically, there's a course, uh, course ID, and, uh, uh, yeah, in, 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 in compact course ID, okay? Just to be a bit explicit. So, for each course ID that has incompatibilities, if there are incompatibilities, there's a, a row in this table where you have the, the course ID and the ID of the course that is incompatible with the previous one, okay? And then, and then that's all, okay? And then if you missed something, you come back and you redesign things, okay? Once you have this schema, you can try to go and adapt uh, the SQL creation uh, file, so the one that I put uh, in, in the labs, uh, you adapt it, uh, so you put a statement to create tables and so on, you put some data and then you take it, copy and paste in uh, DB browser for SQLite, just let me show it to you, DB browser for SQLite, okay, so create a new database, you need to put it somewhere, db.db and then you just cancel and you run the stuff here okay create tables etc etc if everything is fine it will create the tables it will populate the table with the information you need okay and then you save it of course now you cannot save it but you save it you close it and you have your database ready for for use okay and since you started from a script, an SQL script, in case you need to modify something, you start from scratch, okay? Create a new database, copy and paste the new uh, SQL instructions, and create a new database. Okay, fine. Yes. Yes. The key, uh, yes, the key is the couple, right? Yes. Okay, let's, uh, let's uh, put into evidence which is the primary key, okay? So of course the primary key is uh, ID, the study plan is course ID, user ID, but this is more, uh, you know, <laughs> database course 
But in any case, it's true. You need to establish a, uh, you know, which is the primary key when you define the table. So for the courses, uh, actually, course ID, that's enough. OK? Right? Uh, those are the primary keys, the one in brackets. OK? Their convenience, uh, uh, it's convenient to establish the primary key correctly, so in case uh, you do a mistake, uh, you like entering twice, uh, you know, the incompatibilities and stuff like that, the database will, will give you an error, okay? So the database can enforce some uh, integrity check, okay? Uh, fine. So that's the database tables. Uh, should be quite simple, okay? Typically, the exams are not bigger than this. I mean, four tables are already quite, uh, you know, a large number for our exams. And then, and then try to think in terms of components, okay? So go back to the design of your application. Well, there will be a component that shows the courses, okay? I don't want the list of all components that are in the application because, I mean, we will not read it, okay? But the, the most important components. Actually, this is the less important part of the readme because uh, then we can uh, navigate in your SUS code and have an idea about the components, okay? While it's less convenient, uh, to navigate in the code, to read the, the APIs, uh, and uh, to, to understand what the API receives, and so on. So indeed, the APIs should be expanded, uh, showing what they expect and what they return, OK? A very simple example, like uh, a JSON object, uh, a small JSON object, and so on, OK? So this could be like a course list, list in uh, whatever, OK? A, and there could be a study plan, et cetera, okay? Not really difficult to write this, but this should be written afterwards, maybe, okay? I think uh, when, when you are developing your application, maybe in your mind you have the idea of the fact that there should be three or four main components. You can write them here, and then as things develop, you will see if you need more important components in your application. Okay, like uh, there, there can be minor components like uh, uh, you would like to have a course item, like a single course. And the course list is actually a list of course items, okay? And the course item will have uh, maybe a component that shows the number of students uh, and things like that, okay? That's up to you, okay? Um, yeah. Well, the screenshot, uh, that's a thing to do at the end. <laughs> and username and password, yeah, don't forget to put username and password, okay? Because you store ashes, okay? While we can have a look at the usernames, uh, we cannot uh, know the passwords, okay? That's the principle of, the, you know, storing the ashes, uh, as we said uh, during the course. Okay. Uh, also, sometimes you need to add other information. For instance, for this exam, you need to say which user is an administrator and which is not. I know it's written in the database, okay? But I don't want to, you know, uh, analyze the, all the files in your application. I, otherwise, it takes uh, one hour for each student, okay, instead of half an hour. Half an hour is already quite a lot. Okay, so if the information is ready here, let's say we are testing your application, we tested it uh, quickly with the user, and at a certain point we say, well, let's try with an administrator. We go to the readme, we'll see, okay, the second one is an administrator, let's change it. Uh, we log in with the second one, we do a few tests with the administrator, that's all, okay? If we, if we don't know which, which is the administrator, okay, we try the first, the second, and, and you know, by Murphy's law, it's always the latest, okay? I mean, it takes time, in short. Okay, so try not to forget things, okay? And at this point, you are ready to start the coding, okay? 
I hope so I didn't forget anything. Okay? So, I mean, my suggestion would be mm, probably you can, uh, you can start uh, piece by piece uh, developing uh, a piece on the server and then test it on the client and so on. Okay? So like, uh, like we did in the labs. Okay? Nothing really new. Uh, in the labs, actually, we start from the server. So actually, this is an empty server. You go to, to your labs, uh, to uh, the solution of the labs. Uh, you go to what we did in the classroom. You take this stuff, you adapt it, uh, and you start uh, writing things. OK? Nothing really new to invent. OK? Of course, you need to uh, have a database in the beginning, so design a database and uh, uh, open the database uh, and start from a simple query like the get, uh, get the list of courses, test the list of courses is working, and then you develop a component, a simple component on the client to show the list of, uh, no, it was not the list of, yeah, the list of courses. Yeah. And then uh, you will show the list of courses on the client, okay? And so on. Uh, and more or less, you should be able to develop everything, okay? And the rest of the skills should, should, uh, should be known to you. I mean, you, you came to the lab, you tried, uh, you know, to, to develop something, you encountered errors and so on, and you know more or less how to debug things. If you really don't know what to do, put some console logs around in the application, in the server, in the client, until you understand where is the problem, okay? Don't give anything for granted. Use all the systems uh, that you have for debugging, like uh, you remember the inspector, the network inspector, okay? Don't forget to use this, uh, this instrument, which is very, very useful, and also the instrument that I and my colleague will use at the exam. Because one thing is uh, what you write in the readme, me, and another is what is actually happening might not be exactly the same, okay? Or well, sometimes maybe you write something which is too generic. I mean, no, no malicious things, but simply it's too generic. Like, uh, uh, let's say, okay, uh, get uh, the study plan, fine. But maybe you don't give a nice example. So we don't understand if there's the full time or part time flag here or not, okay? So what do we do? Well. Let's keep this in mind. Let's try the application. We'll try to use the application, and at a certain point, you will make a call towards the server, get in the study plan. We open the response from the server, and we, we see the actual content of the response, if there's a flag and so on, okay? That, that's why, you know, we, we are using this tab so much, okay? Uh, okay, so... Uh, I think I can uh, show you just uh, uh, the implementation of uh, your colleague two years ago. I took one of, 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 of uh, let's say, of the possible implementations. Uh, it was pretty well done. Uh, I was saying even too much. Sometimes, uh, you know, it was uh, you know, using a even too much uh, st uh, styling. Uh, effects, <laughs> okay? Uh, you're not required to use all this styling and so on, so just forget about the styling, but I mean, focus on the structure, okay? So let's try to run it so you have a, a roughly an idea of what should come out. Um, so let's start the server, server, nodemon, index.js uh, server 2. The server 2 is just for this exam, okay? That's uh, the, the one that provides uh, the information uh, that has been uh, uh, requested through the token. And the client, uh, npm run dev. And let's try, well, let's open it. Okay? No? That's wrong. Oh, no, that's, that's, uh, that's the wrong one. 
Okay. That's, that's the, the project that we make available. <laughs> okay. So, sorry. Uh, add folder. I have the solution. I have the solution. The, the one that I, I will make available for you. Okay. Add. So sorry, we need to stop uh, all the servers. Okay? Well, let's close this stuff. New terminal. Client and PMC. This should be closed. Okay. These are the commands that we will uh, run at the exam. Okay. Uh, we will do it automatically on our server. Okay. So we don't have to type all this stuff for 100 times. Okay, that's why it's important that you stick with the same names for the folders, uh, the, the names of the file to run in the server and so on. Okay? PMC and PM, no, no, the mon index. No, oh, that's wrong. Uh, server 2, PMC, MP, Modern Modern. Okay. That's what has been developed by your colleague, okay, two years ago. That's a front page, the page that is accessible without authentication. Okay, that's a list of courses. I mean, we don't really care that's the shadow below the header and stuff. We don't really need the header as well, okay? It was nice because it put the login button here, but I mean, it could be a button on the page, no problem, okay? So that's a list of courses, you log in, you log in, and this is the second page, okay? Which actually he kept uh, the same URL, so he, there's no second URL for study plan. That's a possible choice. I mean, it doesn't really change that much to do one the thing in one way or the other, okay? Not that uh, the the study plan has already been loaded. Okay, it's required by the application. We can play with the study plan, like uh, remove something, let's remove a course. Okay, and then save it. Fine, okay. Um, this is the, the, info, the additional information for each course, the number of students, in case there's a maximum, there's a maximum number of students, and so on, okay? This course requires uh, this other, and so on, okay? Log out, and that's all. That's the application, okay? Now let's have a look at how we run the application at the exam. Actually, we do it like this. Let's open the network tab. And let's load the application. Okay? As I did so many times during the lectures, right? Well, we don't care about the first get. The first get gets a page. Okay? We care about uh, the interaction with the server. Okay? You see there's an API that gets the courses, all the courses, uh, there's the response, JSON objects, with the information about the courses, okay? That's the first API we thought. 
right? So get API courses. Nothing really special, okay? Uh, I mean, I don't think this was really needed. There's a filter in which, ah, yeah, the, to to know to know how many students are enrolled in uh, in which course, okay? But actually, that's a, that's one choice. I mean. We could have returned the same information in, in the previous API, okay? That's the difference between one solution and another one, okay? For some reasons, I cannot tell you exactly why at the moment. We decided to, to have to, I mean, the same API with two different parameters. No parameters, so one parameter give, gives the information about the enrolled ones. Okay? The current... Uh, and API session current, well, of course, in the beginning, the user is not authorized, so it's perfectly normal to have this API that returns 401, okay? That's, that's not mandatory, okay? But since it's so easy to put, you can put it if you like. Uh, we saw it when we saw authentication, right? Just a user fact with empty array, that just check if the user is authenticated, so that's a valid cookie. It doesn't require you to log in again, okay? And this stuff is, is done twice, you see, twice. That's perfectly normal. We run the, the React in strict mode. Leave the strict mode for the exam, okay? If there's a problem with the strict mode, it means there's a problem with your application. Everything should run uh, well, even in strict mode, okay? Because at mount time, typically you shouldn't do operation that requires to modify the server. You shouldn't do a post to create something on the server, okay? Fine. And then, that's all. Until we do something in the application, nothing happens. This is important as well. I don't want to see applications that continue asking things to the server. That's really wrong, okay? I mean, I'm not doing anything. Why should I ask something to the server, okay? The only reason why we see things, uh, you know, running here is because there's an error in the application. Typically, there are loops in use effects, okay? Which are wrong, of course. So, so let's do the login. Okay, I changed the route, login, fine. No request to the server because that's a client route, right? Oh. If you have something already set in the, in the form, that's, that's nice because it saves time, okay? At least one user. Then to test the other users, we will edit the form, okay? But if the password stays the same again, it, 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 it's... Faster. Of course, if I change something, things should work, okay? It's not like uh, it's fixed, okay? It's not read-only, okay? Uh, now I deleted uh, something for the password, I log in, uh, and an error should come out, okay? And that's normal. The post fails uh, with the response, incorrect username and password. Remember, just this message. No, this user does not exist. The password is wrong and so, and so on, okay? But this is just to copy from, from the labs and from the examples, okay? I think it was password, login, okay? So we log in and we get the information from the logged in user. Here you see the first difference between our design and his design. Because you see the answer. The answer for the login included the study plan. We designed uh, things a bit differently. So the, the get API study plan was a different API in our design. I mean, since the study plan is basically a property of the user, you can return it with the API that uh, tells something about the user. That's still okay, okay? That's a possibility. 
a, a different way of approaching the problem. Okay? The important thing is that you specify it and you are able to discuss it and justify it at the exam. So, I know I left it, uh, I left this, uh, you know, as an exercise, but if you here get uh, API session current returns the study plan, it's important that you write it here, okay? If you just return uh, the email, well, of course, anybody expect this stuff, okay? Name, first name, last name, and so on, okay? But if you return something different, uh, write it. Don't forget to write it. And don't forget about it at the exam, <laughs> okay? When, when I will ask you, well, okay, that's the study plan. Is there, I, don't, I cannot see an API that returns a study plan. Wh where did you return the study plan to the API? And you just, if you know, you just uh, say, well, that's the API that loads the user information. That's fine, okay? And indeed, that's what happens here. You see email name, full time, flag, and study plan, which is an array. It's a JSON. You can put whatever you want inside, okay? Uh, and then, well, you decided to refresh the information about the, the courses. Uh, yes. Courses, yeah, the current, uh, that's, uh, that's what uh, we got. Uh, and that's, uh, and the, the post, okay, the post is my addition. The start, that's a second server, okay? It was not required for this here. And the request, uh, well, let's uh, see the, the URL. Localhost 3002 API stats, Authorization, mirror, etc., with the token. And then there's a body, request a body. There's a list of courses, okay? It's actually not really used by the server. But the server, in some ways, let's say, takes this list of courses, in theory, goes and look up information about these courses, then gives me an answer which is actually a JSON again. Remember, this is a JSON, an object, okay? Key value. And I take this value, 50 dot something, and I show it here, okay? The point is just I need to add a f some lines of code in the client to, to handle this situation. So when I need to show this information, I need to make sure it's, the token is valid, the token is, uh, is used to make the request. I take the information, I store it into a state, and the state is shown as a part of the information that is uh, uh, here, okay? And then, well, actually it looked better, you know, because, <laughs> of course, this is just to show <laughs> you. Uh, I enlarge the, the, the application to show you, but we will test it at this size, okay? So it looks uh, even nicer, okay? But Anyway, the style is not evaluated, so if the button is not rounded, it's fine, okay? And you don't get additional points because the, the button is rounded, okay? Um, and then we can use the application. So we can add the course. You see that there are some courses that cannot be added. So, I mean, it, this was not in the text. Let's make the button disabled. It's more about, uh, you know, what you have learned about uh, good practices of the, good, of the web application. So if something cannot be used, I mean, maybe it's better to show to the user that this cannot be used, like disable a button or make it in a different color or whatever, okay? Uh, you can add something else like this computational intelligence. Let's try. So let's add it. Now it's been added. This is uh, something that has changed in the state of the client. You see that nothing has happened here in the network tab. So there was no communication towards the server. Okay. When I press a save, this uh, information will be saved. You see that something has happened in the network tab. 
again. So we were here at stat. Well, actually, he chose to implement this post study plan modifications. That's a different approach from ours. But that's a nice thing of, uh, you know, evaluating 100 projects. <laughs> that you have 100 different approaches. I mean, not, not so many, but uh, I mean, uh, a few different approaches for sure. Okay? Uh, that's a possibility. Uh, let's have a look at the other. The other is study plan modification. That's a path. The request is, well, he decided to send two arrays, one with the add and the other with the remove elements. Okay? The courses. I would like to add this course. Okay? That's a possibility. I mean, in this case, it's acceptable. I mean, I'm not expecting that the same user is operating on the study plan using two different instances of the client application, okay? So here, it's fine. Uh, depending on the situation, an approach like this might not be the correct one. If the resource is shared, like uh, you're booking something, you cannot simply say things like this. Okay, you can, you can say add and delete and so on, but you must be ready to the fact that things may fail, okay? Not because you did something wrong, but because something has happened on the server, okay? I mean, this is a possibility. He liked the, no, not to resend everything, but only the difference. That's fine, okay? We had a different approach. Like we said, well, post API study plan. Of course, if you send only the difference, the server has less things to do. If you send the whole study plan, the server needs to delete the old study plan and then add the new study plan, okay? But in any case, on the server, you need to do the check if the new study plan is still valid. So it. It fulfills the constraints that we imposed in the text, okay? In any case, either with the differences or with the overwriting of the study plan, okay? Yes? The yes. The validation should always be at the server side, okay? For the things we would like to enforce. This is really, 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 really important, especially here in the cybersecurity course of study, okay? Client, uh, I mean, can only give guidance to the user, okay? But the client is not the place where I enforce uh, constraints because anybody can send a request, a forged request, even authenticated users, even authenticated users with a different account and so on. And the server must distinguish which user is doing the request and decide if, if it has to be accepted or not, and if the parameters satisfy the constraint imposed by the application or not. And if not, the server must reject the operation. So it doesn't perform the operation, returns an error, whatever is, uh, is uh, uh, I don't, uh, whatever is required by the API. The API has a way to return an error, okay? It, it just doesn't return a 200, it re will return, a, I don't know, four, four something, four to two, four, four something else. And uh, uh, it will maybe send a message with the problem, okay? So it's easier also for you to debug, okay? Uh, if it's an error that may happen during the use of the application, this error has to be shown to the user as well, okay? Like the login. In the login, if it's wrong username and password, this may happen, but the user must be notified, okay? We cannot simply click on login and nothing happens, as I brought in the FAQ. You remember the FAQ, huh? I brought, I mean, you log in, you need to say something. Either the page changes, Something in the page changes, you are logged in in the, in the header or whatever. 
Or you say, wrong username or password. Otherwise, I think it doesn't work. I click again and again and again, but nothing changes. I don't know if I'm sending the data or not. Yes? Yeah, the incompatibility, we need to look into the code, okay? There's probably a complex stuff. There's a part on the client, but this is just for convenience, okay? That's the, um, you know, uh, the reason why some buttons are disabled, okay? There's, so there's, there, there will be some functions where this incompatibility is uh, calculated. And then it's also validated on the server side, okay? So let's have a look at the, at the server. Now we understood more or less how the application works. So let's have a look at the server. Um, server. Uh, so. Ah, no, this is server. Yes, server. That's the correct one. Okay. Let's make it a bit smaller so I can read. And then when, when we will find the point, we will uh, enlarge it. Okay. Uh, study plan modification. Okay. You see this uh, check study plan. Okay. Probably that's inside here. Okay. Let's have a look. Okay. Get courses, get the number of students, get the student, the current study plan. And then uh, you perform a, a number of checks. Okay. The course exists, uh, it satisfies the maximum number of students, uh, it's a mandatory, so there's a mandatory constraint which is not respected, and four, uh, four of a uh, list of course incompat incompatible course, okay? If you find the course, you will, uh, you know, add it to an error variable, an error array, okay? And in the end, if there's an error, you will return the error, okay? So if the return value is empty, it means it's an empty array, I think. Uh, so if it's uh, and not empty, you will return the errors that uh, happened. Otherwise, you go on and you proceed to do the operation on the database, okay? So that's a place where the check has been done on the server side. I hope this has been clear enough. I gi will give you the code, okay? Uh, so the edit study plan actually does the operation on the database, so the queries, insert, uh, and so on, okay? Uh, okay, let's go to the client. Uh, need to, to understand how, how this work is organized. So that's a study plan, that's the application. Let's have a look at the, of the states in the application. That's a courses, errors, student, student that's a user. Save the study plan, okay. And I hope there's no error because it's strange that out talking is not used, but I will check it. Save study plan. Uh, okay, loading, set loading, waiting. Well, waiting is not really needed. Uh, when you do the modification, That's why you should be able to explain the code because understanding the code is more difficult, right? But at the exam, so in the, while you're explaining the code, we also understand that you develop the code, okay? Otherwise, we need to debug the code, uh, I mean, reading the code. 
But it, if the code is good, it, it, it's easy to read. If the code is not good, uh, I mean, uh, a lot of explanation is needed. Remove, save. Uh, mm -hmm. Course, let's have a look at, no, course is just a model. Course list, uh, course item. course details, uh, okay, contextual button, okay, so there's a small round button component specified, well, well this thing is not so good, but uh, anyway, that, that behaves according to the requirements of the application, that's basically this rounded button, okay, that get disabled or not depending on the situation. And probably here inside, that's the logic of, uh, that decides uh, if uh, it needs to, uh, if it needs to be disabled or not, okay? You see, disabled or not, that's the result of the constraints that we get. And the constraints comes in, uh, where do they come in? constraints uh, and the contextual button we need to go back uh, contextual button constraints so the constraints were here that's the result of the constraints uh, that's this check course constraints okay so you go to this check course constraints. That is basically the equivalent on the client side of what's happening on the server side. Okay? Yes. In there? Yes. Yes. Yes, indeed. That's a place on the client side where these things are computed. So if you notice when you play with the buttons, let's close this. You play with the buttons, I, I add this. Yes, this is six, okay? Uh, yeah. No, that's... Uh, Let's have a look at, yeah, let's do it like this. You see, I added one, so I add this, uh, okay, it's green, not disabled, but since I reached the maximum number of credits, I mean, I cannot add anything else in short, the rest get, uh, becomes disabled, okay? You see that uh, you still have the button, but becomes disabled. That's a function that we were seeing before, okay? And of course, this is done, I mean, the, the update of the interface is done automatically by React. That's why we are using React. Because we will change the states and the props according, of course, to some logic. So that logic has to be implemented, and that's the one that we were seeing, seeing before, okay? This decides if it should be disabled or not. But once we pass disabled to the component, it's up to React to make it disabled, okay? Okay. Um, so, I mean, this is very well organized, even too much, I, as I was saying, okay? Because uh, it takes time to organize code very well in, in, in this, uh, um, li like it was done in this project. But, uh, I mean, we don't require this level of order, but we require something that is reasonable, okay? I mean, uh, he put everything to an object and so on, uh, passed object instead of passing several uh, properties and so on, okay? Which makes things uh, cleaner to understand, etc. But, I mean, 
mm, you can pass uh, multiple uh, um, attributes uh, to components. Uh, you can you you don't need to use context and so on. Okay, it's still fine. Just make sure that your complexity in handling the code doesn't grow too much. Okay, because it, if it's too difficult for you to work, of course, at a certain point, you will have uh, errors. And the more errors you have, the more mistakes you make, uh, the more difficult it becomes to, to correct them. Okay, you need to debug more. And if, if the things are not uh, in a well shape, uh, you know, you correct one thing and you break another one. Okay. Um, we can have a look at the use effects, uh, maybe. That's one of the things uh, I will do often at the exam. I mean, as you can see, there are just uh, two use effects. That's the use effect uh, that's in uh, main. That is basically the component that is loaded in the beginning. And what's the closed? OK. That's the dependency. So that's the empty array, just at mount time. So actually, it checks, uh, actually, it loads the courses and the students, OK? Because it designed two APIs. I mean, not really sure why. He wanted to show promise all. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and then you fetch current student. That's the equivalent of fetching the logged in user, OK? Because it's called it student. And then the second use effect, it's a course dependency string. Ah, that's, that's me. That's me. So, I mean, that's the out token. That's, uh, I mean, the point is that I need to make a call to the second server to get the information about the study plan every time the study plan changes. OK? I know that somebody of you in the lab has tried to use the array. Uh, you know that in the slide we say, well, that's not recommended. Unfortunately, I know it works, but make sure it works every time. So make sure every time you change this uh, content of the array, you create a new reference to a new array. Otherwise, it will not work, OK? If we would like to be sure that it works every time, regardless of the reference and so on, you can do as I did. Like, uh, you can compute a value, which is a function of the array. Like, concatenate everything which is in, in the array. Convert it to JSON, if you like. OK? And use that value, which is actually a string at this point, as a, as a dependency. So every time the content changes, you force the execution of the callback of the use effect. OK? It was not so easy to add this uh, here. OK? But in any case, I mean, this was indeed was not required since the beginning. So uh, yeah. So in short, uh, basically, this solution doesn't use use effect except for the first one, which is mandatory, OK? Because uh, you need to load some data from the survey in the beginning, like the list of courses, like in your case, the list of tickets, uh, the list of whatever we ask, OK? Uh, and, then, and then the rest is simply managed by the events, depending on where the user clicks, or where, do you, where you navigate, and so on, OK? So I mean. Uh, you can use more use effects, no problem. I used uh, some use effects in the solution, it's fine. As long as the dependencies and the way they operate is clear, it's fine, OK? Try not to introduce states just to make uh, use effect work, OK? In the end, you can make them work. Because, I mean, even a complex state machine can work. but Again, it becomes difficult to uh, understand how things work and to debug these things, okay? Because these are all asynchronous operations. 
These callbacks run when a reactor likes them to run, okay? Not when you call them. Okay, maybe we can have a look uh, at uh, the readme, okay? Uh, which is not our readme, but uh, he is a readme, let's say, modified by me, so you have a, hopefully a good example. Uh, where's the readme? Yeah. Okay. Exam one, study plan. Okay, I don't want it to, to, to put the name. I asked him if I could share his code, okay? I will not share your code unless you give me permission, okay? So you, yeah. But have you already decided about giving that solution of each uh, code? Uh, yeah, yeah, I asked my colleague. Actually, we decided not, sorry, <laughs> okay? But this is a really good solution. I think you can get a lot of inspiration from this, okay? You can start from this uh, uh, readme, which I try to keep simple enough to be adaptable or to be, uh, that, that you can adapt easily for your case, okay? And that's the starting point and the rest actually, I mean, we, we don't want to transform the exam in a copy and paste, but in any case, it would not be copy and paste. And in any case, the risk in, in giving more and more solution is always that uh, you need to invent more, more and more complicated things, okay, for the exam. <laughs> Actually, I don't think this exam is so difficult, okay? Once you do all the labs uh, and you practice a little bit with the, with the labs uh, and we develop things together in the classroom, Mm, should not be that uh, difficult, I hope, okay? It was not that much difficult in the past for your colleagues uh, in, in, the, in the past courses, okay? Okay, so that's the client application route. So actually there are just uh, two. As we said before, these tools have been merged. Actually, they've used are there because you saw that in the beginning you only saw the courses and then you saw the courses plus the study plan. You remember that, right? Yes, course plus study plan, if you do log out, we only see the courses, okay? It's the same route. So it means there's a state who decides, that decides what to show. It actually it's the user, I, I mean the student because you call it student, okay? And if there's a student set, we can handle the study plan or not, or, or, or we can just show the list of the courses. Well, login, there's nothing to say about login. API courses, yeah, try to put an example of something that you get. I mean, for get, typically it's not that uh, important because get uh, can be easily understood by the code and so on, okay? But for the rest, uh, it might be important, like, uh, for instance, uh, create a new study plan. Do you require the full-time flag? Do you require a list of courses, whatever? Okay. He decided to implement the edit. Okay. So there's a different way of using the API. Uh, the addition and the removal, called removal. Okay. And then they out token, uh, well, uh, actually I wrote the token payload here, okay? So it's clear what we put into the payload. That's my addition. And then there's the login, logout, and so on. Well, actually, if you personalize the login and the, or the current user, well, put the information here, okay? Here we are not just getting the name and the email, but also the application information, like the full time, the study plan, and so on, okay? So if you do this modification, highlight them here, okay? Uh, like here and here below, okay? API Server 2 is easy, typically just one API, I mean, not really a problem. Database, uh, 
if you need to specify something in particular, you can specify it. There's no need uh, to, you know, comment every column and so on, okay? It takes time to write the readme file. So try to use your time in the best possible way for your exam, okay? So if you name a, a column uh, with the name email, well, I mean, there's no need to say the email contains the email, okay? Ash, salt, and so on. Maybe full time, for instance, would be nice to know how it is handled because there are three values. It's not really immediate. If, it is, if it's null, the study plan has not been set yet. If it's uh, zero, it's part time, one full time. That might help in, in case we need it. Okay? Uh, so, I would say, com if you use uh, reasonable names for the columns, uh, you just need to comment uh, what is uh, peculiar for your solution, okay? Uh, the components, well, here people write uh, a lot, always write a lot. I try to keep, uh, you know, the most important ones here. But really, this part is uh, the least important for the readme, because we can have a look at the components while we look into the code as we did before, okay? Well, the screenshot is just an image, an image or two, okay? And the credentials, don't forget the credentials, okay? And the, if there's an additional information, like in your case, there's the administrator. It's an administrator, yes, no, put it here. Or just put admin in some places, okay? Just, I mean, make sure it's clear. And make sure the information is correct, okay? Because if you write uh, PVD and then it's not PVD, we cannot test the application unless you remember the password, okay? Uh, not sure if you have questions uh, about this. Of course, I will make uh, the solution available as soon as I'm back in the office, okay? Just double check one thing uh, that I... Uh, I've seen here about the token, but uh, I mean, the rest should be clear enough, I hope, okay? No, this, this doesn't matter, okay? So, uh, for the exam, I will publish, uh, uh, I would say, around uh, three, four days in advance of the deadline of the exam. I will give you a link where you can book a slot for the oral exam, okay? I, I will send a message on Telegram about this, uh, don't, don't worry. Maybe even a, a preliminary message and then a message with the link so you know <laughs> that we, it will come. And uh, please book a slot only if you are reasonably confident that you will uh, submit uh, the uh, final exam, uh, the, the project so for the exam, okay? Because otherwise, we, since you are so many, I think there are 80, 80 people booked, 80 students booked for, for the first exam. So it will take uh, three, four days, maybe, to have uh, everybody you know, discuss the project. And so we need to book uh, rooms, uh, we need to you know, create a schedule and so on. So if you think maybe I'm not going to to send it, to submit it, well, don't book it, okay? If, if all the slots are finished and you still need to book, either you send a telegram or, 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 or we will notice and we will add additional slots, okay? But adding additional slots means uh, we need to book a room before, okay? Because we need to have a room available for, for, for discussing the, uh, the exam and so on, okay? So, uh, I think it's all, unless you have questions. Uh, uh, don't forget to, to fill up the uh, final questionnaire of the course, right? That's the Italian, but that's the English version, right? Okay? I know you need to fill it up to book for the exam, so probably you di uh, did it already, but in case, okay? Uh, it's important for us, especially this is the first year, especially the free comments. I mean, we don't really care that much about the percentage. Of course, 
it's, it's nice to have good, uh, good marks uh, as it happens for you. But uh, I mean, especially the free comments, if you have uh, comments about the course, something that can be improved and so on, please tell us. Even small sentences, we don't really need, uh, you know, uh, very long uh, discussions. And of course, you can always uh, tell it to me in person, via Telegram, whatever. But if you do it like this, it's anonymous. If you tell it in person, of course it's not, okay? So it might be less, uh, less easy to do, okay? You can do it also after the exam if you like, okay? Feedbacks are always welcome. Okay, I would say that's all. If you need uh, something by me, I'm available on Telegram, okay? And by email as well, okay, in case uh, you have problems with Telegram. Uh, just be patient sometimes, but if I don't answer for, let's like, say, one day, two days, probably I didn't read the message, I'm sorry, feel free to send it again, okay? Thank you, thank you for attending the course. Thank you.